Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special election edition of News Now. I'm Roger Colton. Between now and Election Day on April 6, Franklin Tucker and I will be interviewing candidates for townwide elections. Today, Franklin and I welcome Evelyn Gomez, who is a candidate for the Belmont School Committee. Let's get started. Franklin, you've got the first question. So welcome, Evelyn. Um, first question I have is, um, you've been uh, a, a school committee member since June of last year. So that, couldn't, that could not have meant <laughs> the most difficult way of entering a school committee, uh, the school committee, but in a pandemic. Um, what, now there's been a lot of uh, uh, um, issues that the, that the school committee has had gone through. What is the biggest misconception some people have of the school committee during this pandemic? Thank you for your question, Franklin. Um, so you're right, I did enter the school committee right in the chaos of the school reopening. And it has been a very chaotic year. Um, it has felt I have felt the intensity of this year. And I think one of the things that most people um, or some people believe is that, you know, that we're actually not working to open the schools. There seems to be this idea that we are purposefully trying to keep the schools closed. Um, and that's just, that's just not true. Um, you know, we've dedicated hundreds of hours, if not, you know, into thousands of hours trying to figure out ways to make sure that we can do so safely with the with the constraints that we have in terms of budget, in terms of staff, in terms of um, our older buildings, and trying to do that as safely as possible. And I think every single one of us on the school committee wants to have kids in schools. Evelyn, I would like to ask you a question that has been asked of elected officials for time in memorial or for candidates for elected office uh, for time in memorial. And that is, as an elected official, which is your job? Is your job to reflect the opinions of the community or is your job to assess the information and the knowledge you have and make an independent decision uh, for what you believe is best for the community, whether or not it reflects the opinions of the community? That's an excellent question. First, I think that part of our job is definitely to listen to our constituents, right? It's definitely to be out there, um, I would say boots on the ground, but that doesn't apply this year. Um, you know, being on these Zoom calls to be able to hear people's concerns, people's opinions, how decisions impact them personally, and synthesizing all of that information with what we know from, um, from experts, scientific experts, what we know about the, the constraints. So mm -hmm. taking all of that information and making an informed decision. So I think it's, it's, a, little, it's a little bit of both. Uh, but I think uh, sometimes the pop the general population doesn't quite understand all of the constraints that, you know, that we have in terms of, of budget or timelines or mandates coming from the state. And some, it is uh, up to us to voice the concerns of the, of the community, but also synthesize all of that information to make the best decision possible. So, and sometimes I think that does go um, against what some you know, what some members of the community believe, but, you know, that's, that's why we are leaders and elected leaders to be able to make tough decisions um, in the face of all of this information. So Evelyn, one of the um, uh, um, major issues that you've been championing is uh, diversity and equity in Belmont schools that many people have said has been long in coming. Can you tell me a little bit about what some of your goals in that area were when you got on the board in June and have you accomplished them or how close have you uh, come to accomplishing those really important goals of diversity and equity? Yeah. So when I first joined, uh, I think I had a very vague understanding of, of what I meant in terms of, of equity. And really what, what it came down to was I want the Belmont Public Schools to be a place where I feel comfortable sending my kids. Um, and we have, 
we have a history within Belmont Public Schools of you know being an excellent academic institution. But it, once we start to dig a little bit deeper, we start to see some of these inequities and some decisions that lead to some students getting opportunities and others not. Um, so now that I've been on the committee, I've had a lot of opportunities to talk to people and hear how those inequities affect individual students. And I have worked really hard this year, first in establishing that equity subcommittee. I, I spearheaded that effort um, and made sure that that happened this year. And second, now, uh, now that that committee has been established, my goal is to have this equity audit for this year. And the equity audit looks, you know, looks at our, at our system and figures out where in the system decision points happen that limit those opportunities for kids. And I, while I don't think that this work is done, um, definitely not done. And I, I honestly, I don't think, you know, I don't think it's ever going to be done just because, you know, if we want to create something that's, that's more perfect, it just continues, the work continues, it never ends. Uh, but I do think that we're making some strides. I do think that um, moving forward with the equity audit, hiring a diversity director will allow us to diversify the workforce, which you know, allows kids to see themselves in, in their classroom, and to see themselves reflected in that position of authority. And I also think it's, it's really important to think about the stories or the content that we focus on in our classrooms. We wanna make sure that it's inclusive of people from all different backgrounds. And that's something that, again, we're working on this year. Um, the work is definitely not done and we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, but I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm in this for the long run. I, I, know, I know that my heart is, is in it and I know that a lot of people in the community feel the same way. Um, so I, I'm willing to you know, roll up my sleeves and keep the work going. I'd like to extend that uh, conversation for uh, uh, just a minute. I, I think that everyone would agree that equity is a social uh, issue that, that we should address. Uh, why is it an education issue? Why, why is it an issue for the school district? So I think it's, a, it's an issue everywhere. Um, just study after study after study have shown that when you, when you respect and amplify that diversity and the voices that, the diverse voices within a community, within a business, within a nonprofit, in any sector, your outcomes improve. You have a, a, wider, a wider lens of what is even possible. Uh, just because of the, the background and the experiences that different people bring to the table adds richness to the discussion. Uh, so I don't think it's particularly a school issue. I think it's an everywhere issue. Uh, but why does it matter in schools? Because our kids are going to be the leaders of the, of the world that we are leading them. And we want to make sure that they, they are able to feel empathy for, for the people around them and and understand different perspectives and understand that, um, you know, that diversity is not, it's not detracting from, from anybody. It, it's adding and building to our community. Uh, let me ask you a, a little bit about the other big issue that's gonna be on April 6th, besides uh, the election of uh, town officials, and that is an override. Um, uh, if the override fails, uh, what are you going to do on the school committee to protect certain things? And what are those things that you're going to go out all out and protect? And, 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 and in that vein, uh, there's a group um, on Facebook, the uh, uh, Time to Put Kids First in Belmont, where a number of their, um, the people who are in that uh, group have called, who, who, who said that a diversity uh, director is something that we don't need. You know, we'll, let's do it. Let's put it into teachers rather than a diversity director. So uh, just a little bit about uh, if, uh, if the override fails, what would you protect? Yeah. So I think within, within our district, we have definitely come to the understanding that making cuts across the board is not the best way to approach it if an override fails. So if, if we don't get that extra funding, it's, 
I think we're all in agreement that, you know, typically how things, how these decisions get made is, you know, the last people that come in are the, the last people that get hired in are the first people that come out. And I think there has been just this shift in the last couple of years. It's not even just this year, but the last couple of years in realizing that, that focusing on diversity and equity really does elevate everybody's achievement, every single person's achievement. Um, I will definitely be vocal and protect that diversity director position because I know that, I know the personal stories of so many black and brown kids here in Belmont that have experienced firsthand racism in the classroom that have been denied opportunities to join uh, certain, certain groups for example, the math acceleration group, there are you know, a good handful of, of parents of color that did not even know the program existed until after its elimination. And it's just small instances like this that, that build up over time that might not necessarily come to the awareness of, of, of everybody, but it impacts the way that our kids can learn. And in the messages that we're sending them by having um, you know, AP classes that are majority white and Asian, it, it gives messages to those kids that, you know, that people of color don't belong there or haven't earned a spot there or are not, not good enough to be there yet. And we, we, I want to make sure that those messages start to start to shift. And I think a diversity director position will allow that to happen. And I also want to call on the town of Belmont and the select board to do the same because it's not just a, a school issue. It is a town issue. It is a US issue. It's a global issue. And, and it's, I think the tides are, the tides are changing and people are starting to understand that, you know, that there's value in, in diversity. Evelyn, I, I have one last brief question for you. I, I want to ask you about how you view your job. Uh, relative to the school superintendent. Is, is your job to supervise uh, the school superintendent or is your uh, job to advise the uh, uh, superintendent, Phelan? I would say that my, my job and the school committee's job is to set that big picture, um, to set the, the vision of Belmont Public Schools and hold the superintendent accountable for making that vision a reality. So it's not a part of it is supervision and that's where you know weekly check-ins come in and we get um, reports on updates from you know from John Phelan you know, multiple times a week. So part of that is supervisor supervisory, but it's also holding him accountable when things don't go as planned. And that's that's a, I think that's the most important part of the job. Thank you for being with us uh, today, Evelyn. You've been watching a special election edition of News Now. Today, we've been speaking with Evelyn Gomez, a candidate for the Belmont School Committee. Between now and election day, Franklin Tucker, my co-host and I, will be interviewing candidates for townwide positions. Thanks for watching News Now. I'm Roger Colton. I'll talk with you again next time.